How a turboprop engine works. Turboprop engines combine the reliability of jets with the efficiency of propeller-driven aircraft at low to mid altitudes. Found on anything from a 50-plus seat passenger aircraft to a single pilot crop duster, turboprop engines are perfect for safe, efficient regional travel. And this is how they work. Of all the turboprop engines, one of the most popular is the Pratt & Whitney PT-6. More than 41,000 PT-6 Alpha engines have ever been produced since the family entered service in the 1960s and have accumulated over 34, 340 million flying hours. Of the various PT-6 model range, they range in power from 500 shaft horsepower to over 2,000 shaft horsepower. While not all turboprop engines work exactly like the PT-6, they all follow the same basic concepts because of its widespread popularity and its great example to and is a great and it's a great example to focus on. Topic number one: the reverse flow. Unlike turbofan or turbojet aircraft, air moves through turboprops like a PT-6 by reverse flow. Large air intakes underneath or besides the propeller scoop air into the intakes, where it moves backwards towards the engine's firewall. Upon reaching the aft limit of the intake, the air makes a 180 degree turn back towards the front of the aircraft. In addition to that, the air re reverses direction again when it reaches the combustor, allowing it for a shorter, more compact engine. Topic 2. Compression The first compression stages, which are the axial flow, use a series of airfoil-shaped spinning blades to speed up and compress the air. It is called axial flow because the air passes through the engine in a direction parallel to the shaft of the engine. As the air moves, as the air moves through the compressor, each set of blades is slightly smaller adding more energy and more compression into the air. In between each set of compressor blades are non-moving airfoil shaped blades called stators. These stator vanes, which are also called vanes, these stators, which are also called vanes, increase the pressure of the air by converting the rotational energy into static pressure. The stators also prepare the air for entering the next set of rotating blades. In other words, they straighten and stabilize the airflow. After passing the final axial flow compressor stage, the air moves to a centrifugal flow compressor stage. Air is thrown outwards away from the engine core and towards the combustion chambers. The air has made another 90 degree turn. Topic 3 Combustion the combustor is where the fire happens. As the air exits the compressor and enters the combustor, it is mixed with fuel and ignited. It sounds really simple, but it is actually very complex. That's because the combustor needs to maintain a stable, constant combustion of fuel and air mixture, while the air is moving through the combustor at an extremely fast rate. The diffuser slows down the air from the compressor, making it easy to ignite. The dome and swirler add turbulence to the air so that it can mix more easily with the fuel. And the fuel injector nozzles, as you probably guessed, spray fuel into the air creating a fuel-air mixture that could be ignited. From there, the liner from there, the liner is where the actual combustion happens. The liner has several inlets, allowing air to enter at multiple points in the combustion zone. The igniters are the last parts of the combustion stage. They are very similar to spark plugs in your car or piston engine airplane. Once the igniters light the fire, it is self-sustaining and the igniters are turned back off. Although it is often used as a backup in bad weather and icing conditions. The turbines. Once the air makes its way through the combustor, it flows through the compressor turbine. 
The turbine is a series of airfoil shaped blades that are very similar to the blades of the compressor. As the hot high speed air flows over the turbine blades, the extract energy from the air, spinning the compressor turbine around in a circle and turning the engine shaft that is that it is connected to. This is all in the same shaft that the compressor section and all engine driven accessories are connected to. It's a self-sustaining cycle power cycle of power as long as the flame at the combustion chamber is lit. Note, about 70% of the total engine power is dedicated to spinning the compressor section and engine driven accessories in a PT6. Think of when you're just reading an article about how a turbine engine works where, well, here's where things really start to change. While the compressor turbine may be spinning the aft portion of the engine shaft, the compressor section and engine driven accessories at more than 37,000 RPM, it is not spinning the propeller. An entirely separate Second engine shaft is located just forward of the compressor turbine. Airflow moving past the compressor turbine next encounters the engine's power turbines. These power turbines spin just like the compressor turbine with airfoil shaped blades. This forward engine shaft is directly connected to the propeller, providing the power for it to spin. About 30% of all about 30% of total engine power is dedicated to spinning the propeller in a PT-6. Fun fact, because the PT-6 is a free turbine engine, you could, in theory, hold the propeller still by your hand as the engine is started. The only thing spinning the propeller is air passing over the power turbine wheels. Because these turbines are connected to their own engine shaft, separate of the compressor section it is conceivable that at a that at extremely low power settings the propeller could be could remain stationary but airflow moves past the turbines but please do not try this reduction gearbox there is no way the propeller on the front of a turboprop could spin at roughly 33,000 rpm of the turb of the power turbines a series of reduction gears are installed to reduce RPM to a red line of 1,900 RPM as it is limited in most PT6 engines. Well, what's next? Well, you've guessed it. It's thrust. Now that the propeller shaft is spinning at a reasonable speed, the propeller is able to generate thrust. Exhaust. There's no practical use for exhaust air once it passes through the power turbines. It is simply diverted away from the engine and aircraft and out through the exhaust pipes. In some aircraft, the POH provides a number that shows the thrust generated directly by exhaust gases. It is usually just a few percent of total generated thrust. The propeller is still dominant here. What are the benefits of turboprops? While turboprops generally have lower service ceilings than turbofan or turbojet powered airplanes, they burn significantly, significantly less fuel per passenger. Due to the propulsive energy curve, they're, they're most efficient at speeds slower than 400 knots. While excessive, they're, ext they're extremely reliable. This makes turboprops the perfect engine types for relatively short regional flights. And this is why you will find them on aircraft like the Dash 8, the Cessna Caravan, the Pilatus PC-12, and the Beach Air, Beechcraft King Air. Well, let's put this all together. Equipping an aircraft with a turboprop engine is the best of both worlds for low altitude regional flights. Air is compressed, combusted, and converted into power that spins the propeller. Compared to piston aircraft, they have relatively few moving parts with much less vibration, making them extremely reliable.